tires come in all shapes and sizes, from the small ones found on city cars to the bigger ones seen on trucks, SUVs, and off-roaders. What if I tried to fit the smallest tires possible in automation by playing with the tire size slider and see if it's drivable in BMG Drive? Hey guys, it's Trice here, and let's get on with our build. So with the chassis cars to start off with the panel material, it'll be made out of regular old steel with a ladder type of chassis made out of corrosion resistant steel. The engine placement, good old front longitudinal like any standard issue vehicle on the road with the front suspension, kind of like maybe somewhat mocked us up with a Ford Crown Victoria, the Panther platform by Ford. I believe they use double wishbones for the front and the rear, I know, they use solid axle coil. For the engine, it's a first time in quite a long time to be using, so a V6 degree V6 engine, start off with cast iron block material. And for the engine, I might as well make this like a 3 liter, so I guess 88 millimeters for the bore and drop this down to 82 millimeters with stroke to get this to 2,992 cubic centimeters or about 3 liters with push rod heads made of aluminum. I guess for the crank counter rods and pistons, I guess we'll start out with just cast everything for now to get an idea of like how the engine will perform in terms of reliability and everything. The compression, hmm. I mean, it's 1981, I guess, 9.0 for starters, maybe 6,000 RPM for the RPM limit. And she'll be naturally aspirated, and for the engine with the fuel system, I'm pretty much going to make like an early mock up of a Ford Cologne engine up in here, so they use an injection system, either the analog, aka the mechanical fuel injector, or a electronic fuel injector. I might as well play it old school and choose a mechanical fuel injector, a single throttle setup with a standard bit intake manifold. With the headers, stew do cast, uh, for compactness sake and probably for fuel efficiency, cast low, single exhaust because this will be a base level car, do a three-way cat, no first, reverse full second, uh, con rods are a problem. So if I change the con rods from regular cast to a cast light, this should improve, ah, uh, it did improve the reliability, but not that much. Maybe I'll lighten up with the pistons, maybe? Ah, hyper utility cast brings up by one horsepower number 140, and I got rid of the counter reliability issue here. Seeing that the torque kind of kicks in at 4200 RPM, which is a bit high for an engine like this, we're going to be dropping the cam profile, which will sacrifice power, unfortunately. Damn, this ain't doing much. Right here, I'm pretty much making a freaking Malaise era type of engine up in here. 125 horsepower, 3000 RPM for the peak torque value. So, after tuning the engine to best of my abilities for the year 1991, we get the horsepower rating of 138 horsepower at 4900 RPM, of a torque rating of 166.6 pounds feet of torque at 3600 RPM. So, pretty devilish number in terms of the torque right up in here, and the torque band of having a cast low header. We get it fairly smooth, starting at 3,000 RPM, and then really gets smooth when we start to decrease. But stays relatively smooth for the next 1,000 RPM, and slowly drops off near Redline until it really drops off at Redline. Instead of naming this engine Family 52 Variant 1, let's be like Ford. I believe I'll go back to my stereotypical American car manufacturer, the Axis Hanover? Meaning that the engine is made in Hanover, Germany, kind of like the Ford Cologne engine made in the Cologne plant. And instead of variant 1, this will be the 3 liter overhead valve model. And we'll do a quick pull test to see how this engine sounds right here. That's an unusual amount of, uh, frickin' exhaust poppin'. <laughs> I mean, it makes 138 horsepower, after all. It's not making, like, three or four hundred. Like, why you poppin', bro? And for the rest of the car, with the drive type, good old river drive, because of the base model level, automatic force speed, top speed. I could probably leave it here. Maybe 130, 120 miles an hour would do for a basic V6 like this. And here's the main attraction here for the tires. I'll probably start off with a regular cross-ply, a uh, hard long life, and then just lower, lower. To 110 on the tires, drop the size as much as I can, and, ooh, drop the tire size even more. 90s in the front and 90s in the back, and even the rim size. 
Aw, and increase the tire size or width too, that sucks. So I guess 135s will do with these tiny ass tires if I remove the body here, so <laughs> I could make this a lot lower if I do the advanced trim settings right here. Let's, let's just do this right here, the advanced trim settings. So, wheel width. Jesus Christ. And the diameter. <laughs> Man, this is gonna get a tire diameter. Oh no. No. Yo. <laughs> We're making go-kart tires or something like that. So, match the rear to the front. <laughs> we barely got enough ground clearance as of right now. This is just ridiculous already. I'll probably make this even more, more smaller without touching the ground because it needs some ground clearance for it to be drivable in Beam and G, which is kind of weird in how this is set up once I go over the game. So I changed the tires to a 30, and it looks like we are literally hovering above the ground like a freaking sports race car, wannabe Formula One car. But god damn, this is so ridiculous. Even the ribs, too! <laughs> and the brakes. Oh man, I gotta do something about the brakes. Uh, I haven't configured them yet, so let's just do drums, drums, because they're not gonna be working whatsoever with this car. And you should increase the brake, increase the brake offset. I'll probably put it like behind the rims, maybe. So let's do a uh, six. All right, so the brakes front and back are at a six, and I did change up the rims a little bit, and uh, nope. Something about the hub right there, which I don't think I can do that. Oh, it's the rim center offset. Okay, this looks better already. Alright, seems like the rims are in good shape. There we go. They're in good shape. So with the rest of the car, other than the brakes, which they're pretty much going to be non-existent. Under tray, who needs one when the car is already on the ground? With the interior, like I said, this would be a pretty much a standard issue model, not the more top of the line models. So this would be a premium interior, premium CD player. So for the driver and safety aids, I guess standard issue rack and pinion, hydraulic rack and pinion, no ABS brakes in 1991 with standard issue safety standards, 1990s. And final for suspension, what's be like a wannabe Ford, Lincoln, and the Mercury Grand Marquis, air springs with twin tube dampers, pass sway bars with a normal preset. It appears we got some severe understeer, and the brakes are suffering from severe brake fade. That is terrible, man. And it's also hit me. I did experiment with some of the tires here to make them even smaller. Instead of just relying on the regular cross-ply tires with the street tires, what if I do a racing cross-ply? Let's see. This may not be a bad idea after all. Drags are big. Small uh, Softs are small. Mediums are thicker, hards are the same, intermediates, a little bit of a sidewall thickness, wets, that... A uh, rally! <laughs> what are those?! Damn that voice crack, but what the hell are these tires?! <laughs> the front tires blew out. I agree with you, man, so... Let's... Okay, we're good there, so 140s front and back. Oh my god, like, uh, is, there's a ruler on here, ain't there? I believe I'm doing this right with the ruler, so stick her in. I think I'm lined up well, so let's see where we're at. Jesus Christ, this is, like, one and a half, maybe one point, hold on. 1.6 centimeter thick tires? 1.6? These are 1.6 centimeters thick, these tires. God damn. Damn, this will probably not have traction in Beam and G. Y'all figure it out. I mean, we'll figure it out once we drive this car. The top speed claims 72 miles an hour. What, because of the lack of the tire width and everything? Okay, top speed really drops off once I lower. I mean, you lower the top speed, it lowers too the actual top speed that it estimates in the game. What if I go higher, like 150 miles an hour? Uh, lower, way lower. Jesus, man. There's pretty much nothing I can do to improve the top speed to its true top speed if they use, like, actual, like, real tires. So it appears everything is all good with this car in terms of the tuning and everything, so let's get ready to design this here tiny-ass, almost two-centimeter thick tire type of vehicle up in here. By first doing the design in a time-lapse and prepare to drive this in Beam and G. So let's show you the time-lapse of my design right now. 
So for the design of this car, the overall design is going to be a knockoff of the first gen Ford Crown Victoria. I first started off with the front end by replicating the Crown Vic's headlights by adding two pairs of the main headlamps. Then I added a small turn indicator beside them and capping off with a cornering lamp that unfortunately doesn't work as intended in automation or in BMG. Then I worked on the bottom grill with these plastic bars to add some style, kind of like the real life Crown Vic, and a bunch of other Fords around this time period too. Next, I got to work on the entire trim of the vehicle. I first added the large plastic trim that wraps around the entire vehicle, followed by a small chrome trim piece that goes on top and around the car too. So the trim piece, it starts from the bumper, the front bumper to be exact, then going on to the front quarter panels, right by the wheel wells, like the wheel well trim, then the doors, the entire, both doors, and up to the rear bumper. This applies for the plastic, the big plastic trim, and the chrome trim. I also decided to name the car the Axis Scapa, which is derived from the Scapa flow in the Orkney Islands in Scotland. It's plastered on the sides, just like the Crown Vic on the wheel well. After getting that done, I worked on the back end. It was somewhat simple to do as I'd practiced the styling of the taillights before I did the entire design process for this video here. It consists of a large reflector, a pair of them, furthest from the quarter panels, followed by a large brake light, and your stereotypical red American turn signal on the ends of the taillights. I also added another red reflector strip on the trunk above a small chrome trim piece that matches up with the reverse lights if you look a little bit closely. After that, I repainted the car to a light tan color and added necessary badging on the back and did some minor adjustments to the fixtures and everything else in general about the car. So after getting everything done with this build, here's how it came out. This is the 1991 Axis Scapa DXi. This base level midsize sedan has the smallest tires ever put onto a vehicle. Despite the tires being this small, will they hold up to all the driving elements in BMG, or will they blow up and become a catastrophic failure? Alright, so after completing the Axis Scapa DXi, the base level version of this car with some tiny ass rims, before taking this car over to BMG Drive, despite these big list of problems that we got going here, such as the brakes are suffering from severe brake fade, the car is under steering, the front brake force is very high, the brakes are suffering from brake fade, front and rear tires are very high profile, a lot of overdrive, the front tires are narrow, and the rear tires are narrow. Let's see if this car with these tiny wheels is drivable and works in BMG Drive. So here we are at the map of Italy, which has been a hot while since I police chase. As the bullet rams into them, so the car spawned in, the Axis Scapa, or Scapa, whatever you pronounce it, has been spawned in with the tiny ass tires that are holding up pretty well. So anyways, let's line myself up to do our base performance test if this car is capable of doing those tests. So the test we'll be doing starting off is a 0 to 62 acceleration test, followed by the 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly, a top speed run with these tiny ass tires in this vehicle. So let's get ready to accelerate right now for our 0 to 62 test as we're... We were flying through the gears for a minute, so... Ooh, that bottom out was kind of terrible. So, 50 miles an hour now. Struggling to get ends meet. I forgot I got a steer because we got a turn in the road. Um. Am I maxed out? 58.2 miles an hour. I'm maxed out. Are you kidding me? I mean, I could do the gear ratios, which I'll probably do that right now. Alright, so I've significantly lengthened all four of the gears right there as I bought them out again. So here's a little uh, tune that I got here for all the four gears that I've lengthened. I've very much lengthened all of them. And it seems like that was the trick. As our 0 to 62 time is 19.13 seconds of 1,141.20 feet. That's more like compared to topping out at 58 miles an hour. So yeah, it's kind of weird how the car raped me. Get the hell out of my way, police. Like, how the car topped out at 58 miles an hour is probably because of automation. It calculated the top speed, claiming that the top speed was, like, 50 or 70 miles an hour, but that wasn't the case, so brakes. Now. 
Get out of my way, people! And breaks. That may have been 61, but... Close enough. 62-ish to zero in 3.64 seconds of 153.41 feet. <laughs> I'm pretty much surprised at how these small tires held up to that, uh... Sheer amount of braking force with these what? These are like 12 inch tires or something like that. I did some measurements earlier. It was like 32 centimeters if I show you a little ruler here. So yeah, these 32 centimeter diameter tires held up to these strong ass braking forces of a 3200 pound vehicle. And see, it's pretty much no point of doing a top speed run like I did earlier. Let's just do a time trial run right now. Let's probably do an off-road time trial to really test out the true capabilities of these tires. So staying at the map of Italy, we got a time trial, just a single lap time trial, which I got loaded up here is called the Mixed Circuit, where it claims that there's 50% of gravel and 50% of asphalt that we're going on throughout this entire 4.4 kilometer course, or a mile course, something like that. So let's see if this here time trial and these tires hold up throughout this entire run here. So let's get ready to start here in ready, go. As we launch this bad boy at 3500 RPM as we're wheel spinning, and do it to slidey cars from GTA 5. And <laughs> if this car had a little bit more power, this could be the ultimate tiny, damn, tiny tire drift vehicle. And this is a turn. God damn. Well, at least this car can stop and get stuck on a dime. I can lock the differential, but this is not a four wheel drive vehicle. Like, it's open diffs and rear-wheel drive, like, where did the differential come from? Normally if it's uh, a locked, or not a locked, but open differential, I shouldn't have the differential option. Well, I do give credit, this car can take some, Jesus Christ, uphills, but if you get yourself stuck in, like, like those shrubs right there, it's gonna be much be a pain in the ass to get out of those shrubs or a gravel pit or something like that, but... I pretty much say about this car, it's pretty much good for straight line speeds, uphills can be a pain, downhills is no problem. And I'm still capped at 58 miles an hour. This is stupid of how the automation exported the car, the gear ratios, for the final drive to be capped out at this speed rather than the original 72 miles an hour as it originally calculated. Well, at least the tires and everything else did well with that jump, which I'm pretty surprised. If I'm doing like some hill climbing, like if I would've went to Utah, USA and do some hill climbing, that wouldn't be an option. Oh God. Jeez, it's like, you can't even steer this car that well, especially if you go to a high speed like that. I was steering left and the car refused to steer whatsoever, having that severe understeer because of what we got in store as the frickin' bumper trim or the side door trim is about to come off. So let's make this left-hand turn at a super duper bicooper high speed and just casually miss the guardrail and try to get to the finish line right here. Uh, can I make it through here or no? Yes. Uh, don't mind if I go through your vineyards, your grape fields here, sir. Whoever owns this farm, sir or ma'am, to whom it may concern. And we get a time, 5 minutes, 47 seconds, 186 milliseconds, which is pretty terrible for any other car, like any normal size tire car. So go to free roam, crash just somewhere, so like give me somewhere like this tree up ahead. This tree from my first turn earlier. The radiator is leaking. Back up so I can get a good idea like what, how the car looks like. So after hitting a tree at 35 miles an hour, what is this? Oh, my license plate, uh, right? Yeah, it's my license plate. I thought this was like another piece of the little uh, door trim as I eat that away. So a 35 hour collision held up fairly well for an automation vehicle. And second of all, engine still runs pretty much a standard issue for an automation made car driven in BMG drive. So, for the final part of the video, let's drop this bad boy down a ramp at the Leap of Death as soon as I find it because I got a crap ton of maps here. So, Leap of Death and simply drop this abomination of having these 12 inch diameter tires and pretty much put this car to sleep. So, bring it to the top of the ramp right now. So, Mr. X, you scap a DXI, the base level car, accelerate. Kind of bottoming out, 35 miles an hour to 40, and into 40 again, 
35 mile an hour launch. Pretty abysmal. The freaking like if you look at the bottom of the car, it looks like it's like dead ass empty. It's like <laughs> it's like this car came with no tires, but there are tires right here. So it's 50 times slow-mo this on the side of the cliff face as we get a collision. Let's just do a regular camera. A collision on the rock face here. Speed is up to around eight times. Are we gonna go end over end? Face first. Face first, all right. Base drop we go, and full time. Ooh, right between the gap. And the engine is still working despite kind of going on over end and ramping ourselves down the side of a cliff face, so it slowed us down now to eight times. All wheels first, freaking base drop in our four wheels, and the tires are deflated. I don't even care, we're probably gonna go into pond after those two hits. Yes, we are. Turn the engine off, save the engine, and splash we go. Now the engine is broken as main engine is broken from that hit as we're not slowing down by going into the water because of friction masses, freaking physics. Don't really apply on this map for some odd reason with the water. And dropping the car right here. Yes, indeed. It's a freaking pile of scrap battle after going end over end as the, not only that, the engine is exposed. That's interesting. So like I said, it's a freaking scrap battle, a pile of scrap battle after going end over end, base dropping all four wheels at the middle of the cliff back there, to bake up this kind of abomination that we got going here with all of our tires, except this tire? Yeah. Except for this tire being still on, and the rest of the tires have been freed, been put away, taken away, this and that put out of their misery. So with the Axis Scampa DXI, aka probably the smallest tires ever to be put onto a vehicle from automation and driven in beam and G, these super small tires with a 32 centimeter diameter and 2.6 centimeters long had surprisingly held up well to all the elements. From the asphalt to the gravel roads, it could tackle any form of terrain. What's unfortunate about this car is that it struggles to climb hills due to the lack of tire profile and the top speed is somehow limited. If you change the gear ratios like I did to this car, you can improve the top speed instead of being limited to 58 miles per hour. So anyways, that'll do it with automation and BMG Drive. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.